Hello everybody, welcome to this Verbling class. My name is Teacher Amy and our class today is part of my series called Around the World in 80 Days, um, where we basically travel around the world virtually and read and find out about some different places um, and some particularly interesting things that happen there perhaps. So today's topic is Canada and we're going to be looking at Montreal, which is um, a famous city, famous for quite a few different things. So. If you're interested in learning about Montreal or finding out a little bit more about it, if you already know something, maybe you've been there and you want to come and share your experiences with us, or perhaps you just want to practice your vocabulary, um, your pronunciation and your reading, as well as a bit of speaking today, then do come along and join us or follow along on Google+. Um, before we get started on our topic today, we're going to wait for our students to come into class. And I'll let you know about a couple of pages that you can check out in your spare time, which might help you a little bit with your verbling experience and perhaps your English learning experience in general. Um, the first page is my Facebook page. So if you take a look on the Facebook page of any of the verbling teachers, um, you'll see what they, what they post on Facebook. It can be anything from upcoming classes to useful stuff they find um, as they're going through their weeks. Um, so keep your eye out on Facebook if you would like to, and it's a good way to keep in touch with um, your English learning goals, I guess. Um, the other page that could be handy for you is the Verbling Teacher page, and this is where you'll find all the information that you need to know about a particular teacher, um, including who they are and a bit about their background, their schedule for the next few weeks, including both classes and private tutoring sessions. And also, there's a messaging feature. If there is anything that's not on there that you need to know, you can get in touch with us. And don't forget that we do offer um, half-hour trial sessions for any future tutoring students who'd like to get to know a teacher before they commit to a lesson or five lessons. Um, so you can make use of that. Um, so that's all I wanted to tell you. We're going to go back to the students and say hello and see who we've got here to talk about Montreal with us. I wonder if anyone's been there. Who do we have here first? Let's say hello to Andre. How are you? Hi, Amy. I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm great. Thank you, Andre. Tell me something that's happened to you in the last week of interest. Um, interest? Uh, I don't know. I think not, nothing special. Nothing. <laughs> just, just, work, just work and uh, no more. <laughs> All right, just work. Well, at least it's been steady by the sounds of things. Yeah, yeah. Has it been steady? All right, that's good. Um, okay, so how's how's everything going like with your studying, Andre? Are you feeling like you're making any progress? Uh, in English, you mean? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because, you know, I can't, I can't uh, evaluate my progress right, it's by it's, myself, I mean. Mm -hmm. I agree. It is tricky. It's sometimes a good idea to sort of like, um, you know, sometimes what I do, Andre, is if I find something that I find really difficult, um, and then try and go back to it a few months later and see whether you have improved or that you're able to read it or hear it or whatever, listen to it and understand it, that's sometimes a good way of checking your progress and can make you feel great if you can. So, I think about it. Um, but nice to have you in class. Have you ever been to Canada? No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's one of the places that you would like to go, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I think I want to go everywhere <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Good answer. <laughs> All right, um, me too, I think, Jay. but welcome to the class. Nice to have you. Thank you. Who else do we have here? We have Christian. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm great, thank you, Christian. You know, your picture makes you look as if you're an intrepid traveller. Is it true? I hope so, but... But no, I'm not so intrepid. Maybe... Not really. uh, yeah. Have you been to Canada before? No, to Canada no. I would like to go there. Right. What is... Mm-hmm. Sorry, I missed that question. I talked over you. Could you repeat? Mm, I would like to go there, but I haven't had the opportunity. All right. Yet, right? 
Um, what what attracts you about Canada? What particularly? The the natural part of Canada. All right. So like the landscape. So many natural parts and things like that. That seems wonderful. I must admit, it absolutely does. When you see it on TV, which is probably all I've done, we're going to read about it a bit today, though. Um, okay, natural landscape. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with that. Welcome to class, Christian. All right, so Daniel, hello. 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 Daniel, have I met you before? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Okay, maybe, but we're not too sure. Okay. Well, it's I'm nice sure. to see you. Uh, it's very hard Thank to you. keep track sometimes. Um, tell me just a bit about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Spain, but uh, now I'm living in Miami. Ah, okay. And how come you're living in Miami? Uh, I've been here from from 2012. Okay. I've been and here for three years. Yeah. Why? Why did you move to Miami? Ah, okay. Uh, I'm working here. I'm working mm -hmm. here um, in a in a insurance company. Okay, and is it cool? Do you enjoy living there in Miami? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I, uh, I think the weather is fantastic here, mm -hmm. and I you can go to the beach uh, any time in the year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's nice. It's nice, it, especially in the. Say. In the Mm -hmm. Sorry, no. Especially in the south, when I when I am living now, uh, there you can find young people living here, mm -hmm. a great uh, environment, and mm -hmm. it's nice. All right, that's awesome. I must say, Miami is one of those places that I've seen on TV again, and thought, wow, it looks awesome. I really want to go there. Um, is there anything that you don't like about it? Excuse me, sorry, is, uh, that, is there anything that you don't like about Miami? Uh, may, yes, uh, there are one thing. Uh, you have to take the car uh, for everywhere. Ah. Yeah. So you can't you go really... to the supermarket, you need your car. You need to go to the beach, you need the car. Uh, but if you live in Miami Beach, you don't need uh, the car. But unfortunately, I, I don't live in Miami Beach now. I think it's expensive to live in Miami Beach, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, that's a disadvantage, but it still sounds like a pretty cool place. So thank you for sharing that with us, Daniel. It's nice to have you in class today. Thank you. Okay, Ismail, how are you doing? I I am I am doing well. Good. I'm glad to How hear that. Hmm. Where are you, Emmy? Do you live I'm in, in New Zealand? Canada? Sorry. I'm in New Zealand. Do you know where that is? Yes. Near Australia. No, from the Lord of Rings. Yes, exactly, uh, Ismail. That country. I Obviously love a green. Great country. taste. <laughs> it's true, it is. It's very green. It's another one of those countries that has great landscapes, just like Canada. So I can't compare them, but I'm I'm definitely able to tell you that New Zealand has beautiful landscapes. And how's everything been going for you, Ismail? Everything is okay. The right. weather is cold. I stay always at home. Mm hmm You always stay at home. I, I joined some verbing classes. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> it means that you're improving your English. New Zealand or Pardon? Canada? Could you, sorry, Ismail? Where are you from originally, Emmy? <laughs> I'm from the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not from Canada. Um, but okay. we're going to be reading about Canada today, which is why we've been talking about it, Ismail. Okay. 
Um, okay, welcome. Who else do we have here? Um, we have uh, Juanma or Juanma? Juanma. Juanma. Welcome, Juanma. Hello. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Spain. Which part of Spain? Uh, from the south uh, east. Uh, I think if you are for, from the UK, maybe you know a city called Benidorm. Yes, I absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I live in Alicante, who is uh, at about uh, 40 kilometers from Benidorm. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I know that it's beautiful. I haven't actually been there. I've been to the south and the north of Spain, but I haven't ever been to the east coast, except for Barcelona. So. Um, I will go there one day, Juanma. And do you enjoy living there? Is it is it good, or do you get lots of invasion from British tourists? Uh, uh, Benidorm is is full uh, <laughs> of British tourists. Uh, <laughs> it seems when you are when you are in Benidorm, uh, I. I, I I think that I am abroad. I am in the UK because all <laughs> restaurants and many shops are for English people. But that, mm -hmm. that's nice. All right, you have a very positive attitude about it. That's great, Juanma. Have you ever <laughs> seen the TV show called Benidorm? Yes, because I have a friend uh, who is the uh, who who was born in the UK, and he shows me uh, that program uh, <laughs> when I. When I went to visit him in Manchester. Ah, and what did you think? Sorry. What did you think of the TV show? Well, it's it's a a, a critical a critical <laughs> uh, for for English people, I think. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very typical British series, Juanma, because we usually like to make fun of ourselves. And if any of you guys have um, would like to watch a very, very British but quite funny TV series, check it out. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't make British people look very good, though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't care. <laughs> it's it's funny. It's a little bit funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very over the top, but it is entertaining. Um, all right, so Juanma, have you ever been to Canada? No, I never have been to Canada. It's a pity because I want to visit that country. Mm -hmm. But I want to visit uh, New Zealand, where you are living now. Mm -hmm. But it's, right. uh, it, it's far from here, and uh, oh. the, um, uh, the fly, fly is uh, too expensive. The airfare. Okay, therefore it's too expensive. Yeah, I understand that completely. It is very expensive, excuse me, and it's a very long way. It takes from the UK, from London to Auckland, which is where I live at the moment, it takes um, between sort of 24 and 30 hours. Oof. So, yeah, that's two, usually 12, 24 hours actually in the sky and then a bit of a stopover so you can change planes. So it's, very, it's very, you 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 get there very tired, I suppose. Yes, tired and completely upside down because at the moment I just it's my morning. It's quarter past eight in the morning for me, but for most of you guys, it's the evening on Wednesday, right? Yeah, we 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 have a uh, two twelve hours uh, of difference uh, here yeah. in Spain. It's a quarter past uh, eight in the p.m. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So if it's very difficult for your body to adjust because it has to turn completely the other way round. So it, t it usually takes a while. If you come on holiday here, you have to allow yourself like at least four or five days to get normal and then have your holiday. <laughs> yeah. Not you have even to joking. Go there for, for, a, for a month. <laughs> yeah, you literally do, otherwise it's too short and you don't get over your jet lag. It's very depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. All right. Well, it's nice to talk to you, Juanma. Welcome. Thank you. Um, who else do we have? Oddie. 
Did I say your name so badly that you didn't recognize it? <laughs> Odie, maybe? <laughs> no, perhaps you're not there at the moment. All right, I will skip past you, Odie, or Odie, or not sure. And say hi if you come, and I'll go on to Paco. Hello. Hello, teacher. Good evening nice from you. Spain. Another Spaniard. What a great class we're having today. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Spaniards. Spaniards everywhere. Well. Yes. Spaniards are everywhere. The Spanish are invading Verbling like the British are invading Benidorm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so right. which part of Spain are you from, Paco? Are you from Alicante? No, uh, I'm from the south of Spain in Malaga. Malaga, Andalusia. Malaga, yes. Yes, yes. Um, well, I'm a big fan of Malaga, I have to say. Uh huh. Yeah, it's, a, like it's a beautiful city indeed. I think so. And, um, well, tell me about your English. Why are you studying English, Paco? Uh, I study by myself with, uh, with Berkeley. <laughs> why? Why? Currently, currently with Berkeley. Ah, why? Uh, because I like it. Oh, that's because the I best know. reason of all. The best reason of all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best, right. the best reason to do things. <laughs> Absolutely, the best reason to do things. <laughs> I couldn't yes. agree more, Paco. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Have you always lived in Malaga? Please. Are you a Malagueño? Have you always lived there? <laughs> Your whole life? Uh, I can't understand. <laughs> Do you so you say to me that you live in Malaga right now, yeah? Yes, were yes, you, yes. Were you born in Malaga? Oh, sorry. Yes, it is. I All was right. Born in so you were authentic, authentically from Malaga. Yes, I am Malaga. <laughs> Excellent. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the class, Packer. Thank you very much, teacher. Um, Savio. Hello. Hi, teacher. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm mean, glad that Where you're talking you talking to you. Where are you from, Savio? I'm Me from too. Brazil. <laughs> All right. I'm in from part of Brazil. Uh, I I'm from São Paulo city. Okay. São Paulo is near um, from Rio de Janeiro. Yes, it's one of the biggest. Is it the biggest city? Yes, it's the biggest city from Brazil, São Paulo. In is. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and have you ever been to Canada, Savio? No, no, in Canada, no yet, but I have been in Australia in 2010, uh -huh. uh, just for just if five months, more or less, just to uh -huh. improve more English. And uh, I just, when I, when I traveled to there, I passed for Auckland né, because you were, you were talking about talk, Auckland in, mm -hmm. uh, in New Zealand Correct. and uh, I liked it so much. The, I like so much study Australia, especially I stayed in Queensland State. Mm -hmm. All right. Did it, were you in Brisbane or were you in the country somewhere? Yes. No. No. In, I know. I I had the opportunity to visit Brisbane too, and just for business, I think it was I passed the just for two or three days, more or less. All right. Awesome. It's a wonderful city. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've been to Australia. Obviously, it's quite near, so it's relatively easy to get over there. Yeah. It sounds yes. like you're, you're, you're acquainted with down under. That's what we call it. You know, New Zealand and Australia. It's like at the bottom of the world. <laughs> yes. So it, yes. that's its nickname. All right, Savio. Well, welcome to the class. Um, Thank you so much. What else do we have here? We have Leire. Hello. Yes. Hello, Amy. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. Finishing Good. my day. <laughs> finishing your day with a, with a, an English class. What better way to finish the day, Lily? <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> um, have you ever been to Canada? No, I have never been, but I would like to go. All right. Well, we're all going to learn about it today because it seems like lots of us want to go there. Um, welcome, lady. I'm just going to say hi to Yuki, who's last but not least. It's because your name starts with a Y, Yuki. 
Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how are you? Uh, fine. Thank you. Uh, how how is it going? Good. Thanks. Um, have you had? Have you got any news to tell us? Oh, I have. A, I have no. Uh, I have no news. Nothing no. special. It Nothing only, special. Yes, it is only it is, it it is getting colder and colder. It is quite a depressing season. <laughs> <laughs> but Christmas is coming, Yuki. You can't say it's depressing. Uh, no, son. <laughs> but you know, uh, Russian people doesn't uh, don't uh, don't celebrate uh, European style of Christmas. So, so Christmas exactly. Day is different. Uh, not the 25th uh, uh, December, Russian people celebrate Christmas 7th January. So, Are you still it, there? Well, I, 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 missed I, 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 I still hear. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can now, but you disappeared. Uh, Russian people uh, celebrate uh, Christmas uh, not the 27th, 25th uh, December, but uh, 7th uh, January, uh, and they celebrate it quite, uh, quite um, like, not so, no? they, not so, not so big, uh, <laughs> humbly. All right, um, so it's slightly yes. different. Yes. <laughs> Andre's giving you a tip, Yuki. You can read that in the chat box. Ah, um, it doesn't right. matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. You can have your own mini Christmas. <laughs> All right. Um, it's okay. nice to see you guys. We're going to get started with everything. Um, it seems like you guys are having problems. Are you okay, all of you staying in the class? It seems like there's a lot of coming and going today. We'll see. Just let me know if you are having any problems. It's always good to let Verbling know about them. Um, okay, we're going to start off by reading something just on the screen about Montreal. So have a look at this. It's just from Wikipedia, but it just gives us a little bit of introduction, if I could just make that bigger for you guys, um, about what we're going to do. And for once, I'm going to start the other end today. So Yuki, you're going to read for us, if you wouldn't mind, please. Okay. Montreal is a city in the Canadian province of Quebec. It is the largest city in the province the second largest in Canada, and the ninth largest in North America, originally called Billy Mari, or City of Mari. It is named after Mount Royal and the triple peaked hill in, in the heart of the, of the city. Montreal is, is in the southeast of the province of Quebec. The city covers most of the, the island, most of, of the island of Montreal at the confluence of Saint Lawrence and Ottawa rivers. The port of Montreal lies at, at one end of the, the of the Saint Lawrence Seaway. The river gateway that stretches from from the Great Lakes to the Atlantis. Thank you, Yuki. We'll get someone else to read the next one. That was very nicely read. Great introduction. Thank you. Um, Savio, could you take over, please, and just do this last paragraph? Okay. Montreal was named a UNESCO. UNESCO or no? We say UNESCO in English, yeah? UNESCO, okay. UNESCO, City of Design. Historically, the commercial capital of Canada. It was surpassed in population and economic strength by Toronto in the 1970s. It remains an important center of commerce, aerospace, financing, pharmaceuticals, technology, design, culture, tourism, gaming, film, and world affairs. It ranked 60th out of 140 seats in the Economist Intelligence Unit Global Livability Ranking. 
Thank you, Samuel. All right, there's a couple of tricky ones in here, so let's just check them over. This one here is surpassed. Sur surpassed. Surpassed. Okay. That's better. Well done. So the emphasis is on the pass, and then this is a T sounding ending, okay? Um, okay. This one here is a bit tricky because of the ending. So this is strength. 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 Okay, good. Um, so if you can get the, the th sound a little bit at the end, Savio. Can you get strength instead of strength? Strength. Strength. Yes, that's better. Well strength. done. Okay. Perfect. And um, this one here is commerce. Commerce. Perfect. Well done. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the vocabulary in this part? No? All right. So, let's get rid of that. And we're going to do... We're going to start reading. So, take a look at the link that I've pasted into the chat box. If you'd like to load it up, you can. Otherwise, you can just follow along with us on screen. Um, we've got simply living in Montreal. What's it like to live there? And we've got some really nice photos that you can scroll through. That's It looks pretty beautiful. Really lovely colors and all that sort of light reflecting on the water. Um, but scroll through those pictures when you have a moment, and I'm going to get um, the lovely Paco to start from with a minimum, please, Paco. Are you there, Paco? Okay. Yeah? Yes, okay. Uh, with a minimum drinking age of uh, 18, and a non-stop nightlife traditionally kept off with a 3 a.m. putting stop. Montreal doesn't shy away from being the party city of Canada. On top of, of its lively bars, clubs and restaurants, the city is home to fun-loving, trend-setting locals who ensure the pleasure Never gets dull. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, the bike edges on the world side, said Michael Dalimonte, head writer for MTL Blog, an online arts and culture site. Montrealers won't bat an eye if they were to see a wrong man in a full clown costume, walking around the mall. <laughs> Thank you. Great reading. Okay, so this one here, Paco, is capped. Uh, capped. Yeah, that's better. Well done. Um, yeah. Apart from that, beautiful, perfect reading. There's a couple of bits that I want to talk about in here. So, firstly, does anyone have any questions about any of the words in this two paragraph, these two paragraphs? Yes. Okay, go for it. What does capped off mean? Capped off with. Okay, if you cap something off, what are you doing? Can anyone guess or explain? What's a cap, guys? A hat. Clo closed. Exactly. It's a hat, right? So okay. if you cap something off, it's like you're putting the last um, top thing on top of it. So you might like make um, an ice cream sundae and cap it off or top it off with a cherry. It's the thing that you put right at the top to make it really perfect at the end of something. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they go mm -hmm. drinking, and then at the end of drinking, they have a 3 a.m. poutine stop. Does anybody know what a poutine is? Because I didn't. No, no. Anyone ever heard of it? Poutine. No. It's, no. A, I think it's a special Canadian thing, and I had to look this up because I didn't know either. And it was a dish of French fries with gravy and cheese. So it's basically French fries or chips 
with gravy and cheese, which I don't know if that sounds nice or not, to be honest. But there you go. Uh, That's what we eat. After party, Did it have French I suppose so, yes. Um, who was saying about after a party? Someone? So this is what they, yeah, this is like the typical food that you eat after a night out, right? So who, do, do you guys in your own countries have a typical food that you would eat after a night out? In the UK it's quite often what we call a kebab. It's like the yes. really typical thing to eat on the way home from a night out. What do you guys eat? Churros in Spain. Churros. Oh, that beats a kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. else? Fish and chips. Fish and chips, is that true, Yuki? For, for British people. <laughs> no, because the fish and chip shops aren't open at that time of night. Ah, uh, yeah. It's got to be in the Tripe middle of the soap. night. Tripe soap. Tripe. I usually drink, drink tripe soap. Can you, can you tr type that for me? I didn't catch that one. Tripe soup. Tripe soup. You're kidding me, Ismail. <laughs> yes, really. You really have tripe soup in the middle of the night after you go out. That's like the healthiest thing you guys can possibly think of. Look at the rest of us. We're having chips, kebab, churros, and you guys have tripe soup. <laughs> That's amazing, Ismail. I'm fascinated. <laughs> Um, anyone else have anything in particular? No? You guys no, don't... Okay. Okay. I, don't know. I don't know what... Maybe. Sometimes, maybe there's not a traditional one. I think maybe some countries have this traditional thing, but... Alright, so um, let's go back to some vocab in here. There's another couple of interesting bits. So here we go. Someone's already mentioned this. Was this you, Andre? To bat an eye. Yeah. What's to bat an eye? Or to not bat an eye, usually. Won't love, or maybe. <laughs> Won't love? Love. Love, I mean. Care about something? Yeah. It's more like to care about. So, care in the about. UK, we say they won't bat an eyelid. But it sounds as if in Canada they they say they won't bat an eye. It means they won't even notice something. It was just normal. If you don't bat an eye or bat an eyelid, it means that you're looking at something that's so normal that it doesn't surprise you in any way. Okay. So basically, they're not surprised at all if they see a clown walking around the mall, right? Because they're used to crazy stuff. Um, we know that because of this sentence. What does this little sentence here mean? The vibe edges on the weird side. Anyone know? Nobody? What's no the one. vibe? Like the ambience. Yeah, the atmosphere, the ambience, the yeah, way the people are. Yep. The ambient is weird, the people is weird. And Where? Like, weird. Yeah, exactly. So it's basically like people are quite often weird. <laughs> so if you see something weird, it's normal, right? <laughs> okay. So it's going to be interesting to find out a little bit more. Thanks for the readers so far. And it's now Moses, who I haven't even didn't notice you turning up there. How are you, Moses? I'm doing great. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome to the class. Would you mind reading for us from Even Though? Sure. Even though the city's residents might at first seem to keep to themselves, they can be quite friendly. Montrealers are extremely welcoming of visitors and tend to be quite talkative to talk to Given the occasion, said Mary Eve Valliers, a Montreal native, not native, native, who writes the blog A Montrealer Abroad. They enjoy sharing their love 
of the city with anyone who asks. A sincere bonjour is always a good start. Great, thank you Moses. Let's just have a look quickly at this. Um, this one here was a bit tricky for you. Hey, this is talkative. Talkative. Yep, as in the emphasis on the word talk. What does talkative mean? Talk, talk, talk uh, very much. Yeah, exactly. Talk, 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 talk. Perfect. Okay. Um, what about this one? Native. I've lost it. This one. You had a couple of goes at this, but actually the correct one is native. Okay. Native is a, a person who is from, from the place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well done. Um, anyone else want to ask anything? What does it mean if you keep to yourself? Uh, 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 go ahead. Shy? Okay, maybe not. It's on the right lines, but it's not exactly shy. And we said not to open. Yeah, that's more like it. It's a little bit more reserved, not particularly open. Don't share everything with everybody. Yeah, but it's not really to do with shyness, because shyness is sort of forced upon you by your own feeling. But if you um, if you keep to yourself, it just means that you don't um, go out of your way to share things with other people, I guess. Um, all right, everyone fo um, following everything so far? There's some cool artwork there. And now we're going to have a look at Lady. Could you read for us Indeed? Yes. Indeed, French is the city's official language, with 63% of residents claiming it as their first language in the 2011 census. In fact, Montreal is the second largest French-speaking city after Paris. Still, more than half the population speak English. So visitors should have no problem navigating the city. Expats will find life easier if they learn French, especially if they plan to work in the city. Local law requires workers to, com to competently speak the language. Great, thank you. That was beautiful reading, Nadie. Um, okay, so this is interesting. I think this is probably what Montreal is most famous for. You guys correct me if, if I'm wrong. Um, so it says that 63% of residents um, speak French as their first language and English as their second, right? Because, um, I'm, well, I'm guessing that. It does say more than half the population speak English as well. So this is quite divided in the language that's used. Is there anyone else who lives in a city like this where there are two really, really strong languages or maybe more than two? In Spain, there are uh, more languages, but uh, there are not strong languages. Uh, okay, can you tell us a bit more? Whereabouts yeah. are you talking about? In Spain, in Spain you, you, there are uh, uh, Spanish, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Catalan, <clears throat> uh, Euskera, mm -hmm. Gallego. There are many, many languages. Yep. And well, if uh, you... Sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Keep going. I, I think uh, that uh, uh, some of them are mm, dialects. Dialects. Yes. But, uh, for example, Euskera and Spanish are two languages absolutely different between, between them. All right, so they're really, really different. Can you tell me a few places in Spain where you would find those languages like sort of living side by side, Juanma? Uh, for example, in Barcelona, mm -hmm. uh, people speak uh, Spanish and Catalan. All right. So um, what happens if you go there? Can you speak Spanish to anybody and Catalan to anybody? You should uh, speak Spanish uh, and people should underst should understand you because it's the is the the official language of Spain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in some small towns, uh, in some village, uh, I think all people uh, 
don't speak, uh, don't know to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. All right, so they only speak Catalan. Yes, but it's uh, it's it's only old people who lives in small towns. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, let's keep reading. And it's your turn to read, Juanma. Where do you want to live? Where you want to live really depends. Uh, sorry, where you want to live really depends on whether you plan to speak primarily English or French. Montreal always had a clear distinction between its French and English-speaking communities. Valerie said. Even though the lines are definitely more blurred nowadays, the tradition still remains. French speakers stick to the neighborhoods of family-friendly Outremont, three-line Plateau Mont Royal, community-oriented Rosemont Petit Patry, and the recently rejuvenated Hoch. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about those ones too much. Okay. Hotel Maisonet, while English speaking, except expats tend to live in opulent Westmont. Hipster approved, Mile End, Notre Dame de Grace, NDG for short, and quite La Salle. Beautiful. Thank you. Just one word. This one here is though, even though. Though. Yep. Even though. Perfect. All right. Um, so, I just want to talk about the adjectives that are used in this little list because I think they're quite nice. So, um, I'm going to get you guys, just anybody who wants to, explain to me. No. Nope. Um, what does family friendly mean? Family friendly yeah. uh, in a neighborhood yes. is that the neighbors are, are friendly with you. And families uh, usually go together to do something, some to, to do some. To yes, eat. okay, that's together almost or... right. That's almost right, Juanma. It's a little bit more specific. So if a place says that it's family friendly, what does it really mean specifically? Does anyone know? Family friendly, uh, it is more suitable, especially for families. Yes, exactly. And when it says families, what in particular is it referring to, Ismail? Do you know? Sorry, Danny? When it says family, it's not really, um, it's, it's a little bit ambiguous. Do you know what it specifically refers to? Uh, no? <laughs> if I had a family, I referred. So let me explain. Let me explain. If some, if we describe a place as family friendly, what we're really saying is that we don't mind having noisy children, right? So it's it's friendly towards families with small kids that that can play on the street. Um, exactly what Christians just put there in the chat box. So it sounds a bit strange because the word family obviously refers to lots of different things. But if we say somewhere is family friendly, it means that you can take your children and it's going to be great for them. Okay? Okay. Um, so that's, you can use that to describe lots of different things. And um, what's tree-lined? That's the next one. Uh, tree lines line means uh, tree is uh, there are tree along the street, no? Very good, exactly. Yeah. Trees along the street. So a tree lined avenue is always usually very pretty. Okay, what about community oriented? So, uh, so there is a uh, uh, there are special communities for special specific people, uh, no kind of Japanese town, yeah, in Los Angeles, kind of no. It could it could mean that Yuki, but it doesn't say specifically. Usually that that's called something like an enclave. Um, so Moses has got it a bit more um, on the mark. I think it means more like there's services that are for the community. There's uh, lots local of local people have a. 
local people have strong ties with each other. They Beautiful, are. Yuki. That's yeah. a perfect definition. Yes. I see. Thank you. What about this one here? I'm going to ask Andre. What does recently rejuvenated mean? Uh, I guess it's recently recovered or, or maybe uh, reconstructed. Yes, exactly. So it, in that sense, it means like some work has been done. It's been improved, right? So do you know what to rejuvenate means in the more general sense? I've dragged um, to rejuvenate me, myself. <laughs> you I'm sorry, Mr. Re 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 <laughs> I'm all, already old. <laughs> yeah, that's very close, Andre. It sort of means more like to revive, to add life back into something, okay? Mm. Something that's getting a bit old and tired, just like Yuki, apparently. <laughs> uh, no, I'm only kidding. Um... All right, so that's cool. Anyone have any questions about any of the other parts of that paragraph? No? All right, so please could Ismail read for us from Boulevard Saint Laurent. Boulevard Saint Laurent acts as an unofficial buffer zone between the two linguistic communities where both languages are readily spoken. Delamonte recommended that English speakers who don't speak French stick closer to the downtown areas near Saint Laurent, including Mile and the Lower Plateau, arguably the trendiest area of the city where no one really minds if you speak English. Great. Thanks, Ismail. That was great reading. Um, let's ask... Uh, who should I ask who hasn't spoken for a while? Christian, do you know what a buffer zone is? Yeah. Can you explain it in any way? Yeah, I know what it means, but I don't know <laughs> how to explain. Maybe it's a zone where both English and French is spoken. Exactly. In this city. Yeah, that's and correct. There is no problem if you talk in any of the two languages. Yeah, absolutely. So what does it mean in the more general sense of the word? Does anyone know? Uh, there are two enemies uh, and they are, they are, if they are, they are a buffer zone, so, uh, uh, opposing, op op opposing forces have a uh, have a special space. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the zones are located between uh, the between two countries' border. Yes, generally. exactly. Mm -hmm. So it can be between countries. It can be between any two things that have sort of opposing opinions or opposing um, attitudes or something like that. And it provides a middle ground or a middle zone or some kind of a neutral area, thank you guys, that sort of um, lessens the impact between the confrontation between the two sides. Um, okay, next paragraph is for Christian. What do you what want do to you live want in? in? Yep. Montreal has many residents in buildings that are well over a hundred years old. And while most Montrealists live in one of these charmingly storied house, three to four store buildings, often offer to us places. At one time or another, the creaky wood floors and lack of some profit mean most end up moving to more modern condos, condos or apartments eventually. Thank you. Beautiful. Well done. Really nice reading there, Christian. Um, mm -hmm. Any questions, guys? No. Nope. What, what does referred mean? Referred to. Okay, this is a verb, to refer to something. What does to refer to mean, guys? name? Yeah, 
exactly. In this particular context, it's what we call them, the name of them. Okay. Okay. Um. Any other questions? What is Plexus, Danny? Plexus is is simply the name of. It's sort of like the the local name of these buildings that you can see in the picture. So there's oh. historic houses in this particular part of the world. Plexus doesn't mean anything to me in a, in just an English sense. It has to be in some kind of a spe specific context, okay? Okay. But this this particular type of house in Quebec, they call them plexes, like a local word. Um. All right. I will get Andre to read these two paragraphs here for us. Yeah. Uh, one distinctive feature of these old buildings is outdoor staircases which give uh, their place an appealing old-school look but residents are quick to point out the challenges of shoveling snow off them in negative uh, 30 uh, degrees Celsius weather. Uh, houses are found in the suburban boroughs and tend to be shared among renters. In fact, local recommend uh, recommend experts experts don't uh, venture beyond the city limits when looking for a place to live. The Montreal suburban life doesn't present a lot of advantages as it isn't cheaper, simpler to navigate or friendlier, Valerie said. Quite the opposite in fact. Great reading. Thanks, Andre. Um, all right, questions first of all. Any questions? Uh, suburban boroughs. All right. What does boroughs mean? Anyone know? We'll have a guess. No, it just basically means neighborhood, guys. Okay? Mm. For the suburban neighborhoods or areas, perhaps. Um. Let's ask Lady. Lady, can you tell me what does it say about the difference between living in the city and the suburbs in Montreal? Um, that um, if you live in the suburbs, uh, you don't have um, many facilities. Okay, yeah, that's true. Um, so which do they recommend, which place do they recommend you live in and why? Well, uh, in the city center. Yeah. What particularly is the reason for that? Apart from the lack of facilities in the because, suburbs. Because the suburbs are not cheaper. Mm -hmm. And are not uh, so friendly too. Yep, yeah, absolutely. All right, I think this is quite an interesting one because it seems to me that it tends to be, usually, at least in my country, slightly cheaper and easier and less crowded and stuff like that in the suburbs. Um, let's see what Paco has to say. Paco, what's it like in Malaga? Is it easier and better to live in the city centre or in the suburbs, in your opinion? Uh, well, it's uh, cheaper in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not very expensive to live in the center of Malaga. Well, okay. It's a, it's a very cheap uh, city mm -hmm. to live, uh, to to, uh, to rent a flat, for example, uh, or to, uh, uh, to to get food. Yeah. Absolutely, so it's quite a good um, value place to live. It's very cheap. Whereabouts do you live, Paco? Please? Whereabouts do you live? Do you live in the centre or in the suburb? Uh, sorry, the, 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 the telephone rang and... Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Bit? Yeah. Do you live in the city centre or do you live in the suburbs? Uh, 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 more or less uh, in the city. In the city center, more or less in the center. All right. More center of Malaga, close to the to the bus station and and train station, and, yep. and ten minutes walking uh, 
to the center of the center. <laughs> to the center of the center, awesome. <laughs> yes. yes, because the center in the center in Malaga is uh, quite big. Yeah. You know? All right, thank you, Paco. Let's see what Christian has to say. Christian, can you remind me where you live? I live in Bucaramanga. In where? Bucaramanga, Colombia. Okay. Can you tell me about um is it is it quite a large city? No, it's not quite a large. It has maybe one million and a half. All right, so still reasonably big. Um, do you live in the city center or the suburbs? In the center. And do you think that's better or worse, or what's the difference? For me, it's better. I like to go walking to everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, if I live in the suburbs, I will have to take a bus or have a car. Uh huh. And yeah. I don't. But... It's not as convenient. Yeah. All right. Um, who else should we ask here? Let's ask Andre. I'm interested in Russia. Andre, where where do you live? I live in Moscow. All right. In Russia, in general, is it better to live in the city center or the suburbs? Do you think? You know, it is expensive to live in a city center because, uh, uh, especially for Moscow, it is um, and. Um, and uh, but living in suburbs, if you uh, want to live uh, close to the city, maybe it's not uh, uh, cheap as well. <laughs> you know, be people now like to live near the Moscow, for example, about 30 kilometers, so they can go to the work by cars. And mm -hmm. maybe these regions uh, expensive as well. Okay, so it's quite so. tough living there, it sounds as if it's rather expensive. Um, and maybe is there a lot of competition for good places yeah, to yeah, live? Because, yeah, because people want to live near, near the Moscow in suburbs. All right, Yuki, do you agree with that, what Andre just said? Yes, I agree with him. Yes, quite. Uh, of course, it is quite uh, convenient to live in the center of Moscow. Uh, you can you can easily get to get 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 access to uh, to everywhere by mm -hmm. metro. Mm -hmm. But but uh, but uh, air pollution and the noise of of a car annoys you. So, mm. so ma many people, uh, and of course, it is quite expensive to to rent an apartment in the center mm. of the city. So many people now uh, prefer to live outskirts of the city. Mm -hmm. All right, it's interesting to compare different countries with um, what you know how it's set up with cities and where the best places to live are. Um, I think it does depend quite a bit on your history as well, and obviously, language plays a role in Canada. So, guys, we're going to have to wrap it up now, um, but it was an interesting lesson. Thanks for sharing. Some really good reading today. I hardly may have to make any corrections, so you should be very proud of yourselves. Um, if you want to find out, do some more reading and speaking, come along to my next class and join me. We're going to be talking about being busy or not. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, but if you want to go to bed or you want to watch TV or just put your feet up for the rest of the evening, I understand. Um, but it was lovely to have you all. I do hope to see you all again soon. So take care and see you later. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Emmy. What's happened to you in the last week of interest? Um, interest? Uh... I don't know. I think not nothing special. Nothing. <laughs> just just work, just work, and uh, no more. All right, just work. Well, at least it's been steady yeah. by the sounds of things. Yeah, yeah. Has it been steady? All right, that's good. Um, okay, so how's how's everything going like with your studying, Andre? Are you feeling like you're making any progress? Uh, in English, you mean? Uh, I don't know <laughs> because you know I can't I can't uh, evaluate my progress. Right, it's by it myself. Is, I mean, mm -hmm. I agree. It is tricky. It's sometimes a good idea to sort of like, um, you know, sometimes what I do, Andre, is if I find something that I find really difficult, um, 
and then try and go back to it a few months later and see whether you have improved or that you're able to read it or hear it or whatever, listen to it and understand it. That's sometimes a good way of checking your progress and can make you feel great if you can. So I yeah, think about it. Um, but nice to have you in class. Have you ever been to Canada? No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's one of the places that you... Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Verbling class. My name is Teacher Amy, and our class today is part of my series called Around the World in 80 Days, um, where we basically travel around the world virtually and read and find out about some different places um, and some particularly interesting things that happen there, perhaps. So today's topic is Canada, and we're going to be looking at Montreal, which is um, a famous city, famous for quite a few different things. So. If you're interested in learning about Montreal or finding out a little bit more about it, if you already know something, maybe you've been there and you want to come and share your experiences with us, or perhaps you just want to practice your vocabulary, um, your pronunciation and your reading, as well as a bit of speaking today, then do come along and join us or follow along on Google+. Um, before we get started on our topic today, we're going to wait for our students to come into class. And I'll let you know about a couple of pages that you can check out in your spare time, which might help you a little bit with your verbling experience and perhaps your English learning experience in general. Um, the first page is my Facebook page. So if you take a look on the Facebook page of it. Mm -hmm. You're not part of Canada. All right, so like the landscape. So many natural parts and things like that. That seems wonderful. I must admit, it absolutely does when you see it on TV, which is probably all I've done. We're going to read about it a bit today, though. Um, okay, natural landscape. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with that. Welcome to class, Christian. All right, so Daniel, hello. 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 Daniel, have I met you before? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Okay, maybe, but we're not too sure. Okay. Well, it's I'm nice sure. to see you. Uh, it's very hard Thank to keep you. track sometimes. Um, tell me just a bit about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Spain, but uh, now I'm living in Miami. Ah, okay. And how come you're living in Miami? Uh, I've been here for, from 2012. Okay. I've been and here for three years. Yeah. Why? Why did you move to Miami? Ah, okay. Uh, I'm working here. I'm working mm -hmm. here. Any of the verbing teachers? Um, you'll see what they what they post on Facebook. It can be anything from upcoming classes to useful stuff they find um, as they're going through their weeks. Um, so keep your eye out on Facebook if you would like to, and it's a good way to keep in touch with um, your English learning goals, I guess. Um, the other page that could be handy for you is the Verbling Teacher page, and this is where you'll find all the information that you need to know about a particular teacher, um, including who they are and a bit about their background, their schedule for the next few weeks, including both classes and private tutoring sessions, and also there's a messaging feature if there is anything that's not on there that you need to know, you can get in touch with us. And don't forget that we do offer um, half-hour trial sessions for any future tutoring students who'd like to get to know a teacher before they commit to a lesson or five lessons. Um, so you can make use of that. Um, so that's all I wanted to tell you. We're going to go back to the students and say hello and see who we've got here to talk about Montreal with us. I wonder if anyone's been there. Who do we have here first? Let's say hello to Andre. How are you? Hi, Amy. I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm great. Thank you, Andre. Tell me something that you would like to go, perhaps? Uh, yeah. I think I want to go everywhere in the world. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Good answer. All right. Um, me too, I think, Andre. But welcome to the class. Nice to have you. Thank you. Who else do we have here? We have Christian. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Christian. You know, your picture makes you look as if you're an intrepid traveler. Is it true? I hope so, but, but no, I'm not so intrepid. Maybe, not uh, really. yeah. Have you been to Canada before? 
No, to Canada, no. I would like to go there. Right. What is... We have what the is mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed that, Christian. I talked over you. Could you repeat? Mm, I would like to go there, but I haven't had the opportunity. All right. Yet, right? Yes. <laughs> um, what, what attracts you about Canada? What particularly? The 